There you go. That was good. Right. Hello, my name is Shanga Goman. I'm a 2015 Oakland Youth Poet Laureate finalist, and I'm here today. I have the pleasure of interviewing who? Nairobi Willis Barnes. Yes, Nairobi Barnes, the current 2023 Oakland Youth Poet Laureate. Yes, we are here. I'm going to ask her some questions and get into her artistry, get into her craft, get into her time as laureate. So we're going to get right into it. All right, Nairobi, what's the recent moment of joy for you in this work? Honestly, a lot of recent moments have kind of been like me being able to take time and actually write new poetry and like a lot of new stuff. Because I feel like I don't really get the time to really write anymore. And now I've been having loads of time to write and really focus on like different forms of poetry, you know? So now I get to really like explore and have fun with like trial and error with poetry. For sure. For sure. So after that, now I'm curious about like what's your writing practice look like? How many hours a day a week do you write? Or if you have a general, like, rough estimate of that. Um, So honestly, a lot of times with my poetry, it starts off as, like, one line that's in the middle. And then I'll go from that line down, and then I'll make, like, the beginning. It's a very weird process. Um, I understand. It's, like, very, it sounds crazy. But it works for me. So, like, I'll start off with one line, then make a stanza, and then make the stanzas that end it, and then make the stanzas that begin it. So it works out in the end, and honestly, it may take like a day, two days, a week. It kind of depends on the piece and how metaphorical I want to get, like how much rhyming, what's the rhyming scheme, you know. Um, And then also like, I typically do write a lot just because like I kind of live through jumbled lines. So like I'll stop in the middle of one stanza and move on to the next poem. So it may take a while, but that's my process. Wait, so when you have this middle line, do you like, do you write it just as a line or you do you know like, okay, this is the middle of the poem, if that makes sense as a question, like. Yeah, so honestly, I'll know, like, okay, this is the full line, because I'll just randomly think of, like, oh, that would be a really good line. So, like, I stop everything, write it down, and I'm like, okay, this is my starting point, you know? And so I always know my starting point is going to kind of be the middle, because I don't like to start my poetry as, like, bam, like, this is it. I like to kind of have it as, like, a story, So there's always going to be a beginning, a middle, and an end, even if it doesn't look like that. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Cool. I don't know what to ask next. A little Kim challenge. Um, Let me clear my throat. Okay, perfect. So this goes into my next question with how do you know when a poem is good enough? Mm -hmm. Honestly... I mean, I kind of use my parents as the judge um, because they are my toughest critics, I feel like. A lot of times I'll, like, bring a poem to them when I only have, like, the end. And I'll, like, read it to them as if it were complete so that they can kind of get the feel of the poem. And so then I can also get, like, directions, feedback, like, eh, this didn't really work. Like, you need to build on this. And then when it's completely done, I'll just spit it to them, the whole poem, and then, like, gauge the reaction. Because then I know kind of, like, how my audience or, like, people who are listening will feel like, like, like how it sounds, like, ah, that line was kind of, like, you know, I'll be able to get all of that. Did that make sense? No, absolutely. (laughs) It made sense for sure. I can relate for sure when I was... A more active writer. <laughs> when I was writing heavily in college, I did the same thing. But it's not about me, it's all about you. But look, everybody's a writer. <laughs> absolutely. Now I find it valuable to and that's really like smart to use the um I'm a, are you are your parents poets? Um are they uh my poets? my dad, he thinks he's a rapper. <laughs> um, <laughs> he'll like go and rap around the house. Honestly, 
I consider that to be his poetry. That's his form of poetry. And then with my mom, she will lecture you like nobody's business. She will read you down. Like, and I think that's her poetry. <laughs> so, like, everyone has poetry in a way. You know, like, it's just different forms. Absolutely. For sure. Awesome. And it's cool to have that. I guess somewhat outside perspective on like how the poem is how a poem is going to look towards an audience. So on to your parents. Um, I will never forget um, at the final ceremony. (laughs) (laughs) Glasses are going down. I'll never forget. um, You went up to read a poem, and before you before you said your poems from the audience, I heard something. What did I hear? (laughs) Say it with your chest. And who and who said these powerful words that shook the room? My father, my dad. <laughs> so on the, on that, I'm curious. Like, what is it like to have and going, on, especially going um, after hearing about how they like support with the creation of the poem? What is it like to have that that passionate support? Oftentimes, for the for the youth poet laureate program throughout the years, we often say, listen to young people, young people of the future, listen to the poems. So what's it like to have that kind of passionate, sport-like support for something from your parents, for poetry, for something that is so vulnerable, for sharing your truths like that? What's that like for you? It's honestly, like, it's a very good feeling to have your parents support you no matter what. You know, like, I have a lot of friends who, like, their parents, like, you got to be a doctor, you need to be a lawyer, you know, And I especially feel like that's so for, like, minority parents. Um, I don't feel like a lot of minority parents really cater to, like, artistic dreams as much until, like, you make some money. (laughs) Then it's like, okay, this is a real career, you know. (laughs) But, like, my parents, they've been supporting my poetry before I even knew I was a poet. Mm -hmm. You know, they, like, wanted me to be creative. And they also wanted me to know that my voice was valuable especially as a black woman like being able to speak my mind speak my truth that was always important for them and then as well like my dad especially he has always been one to like support my very out there creative (laughs) dreams Um, I remember when I was doing speech and debate in high school, my dad would come to those long rounds of debate, like sit through everyone, because debate is like from 6 a.m. to 6 Mm p.m. He was there the whole day, and he would sit in rounds and like text me, (laughs) like, that speech was good, like, you did good on, like, ease up on her, like, you know, (laughs) like, he was always very, like, supportive with even my out there crazy, like, things that I've done. (laughs) Beautiful to hear. Wow. I can't wait for this interview to come out already to watch this back. I want to hear that again. Oh, we have to keep going with the questions, though. So, let me see. I love your daddy. I love your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the British is coming out. The British is coming. The British is coming. The British is coming. All right. So, let me see. So, whose work do you admire as a writer, or who is your role model as a writer? So a lot of times, um, I kind of consider music to be a real inspiration for my writing, Um, especially with like rhyming schemes and like poetry that rhymes. It's different for poetry that isn't rhyming. So like for that, a lot of times um, I look towards like storytelling and actually like prose and, you know, like writing skill with unrhyming poetry so like i'll think of like ralph ellison or zora neale hurston you know with um especially zora neale hurston with how she was able to capture like different dialect and like ebonics you know i think that's really big for my poetry when it's unrhyming um but for rhyming schemes i think of a lot of different artists like Kendrick Lamar and Lauren Hill, who was definitely a poet, Erica Badu, like I think of um, like lyricism with rhyming poetry. So I may like use like music or like a lot of times listen to an artist to start putting pen to paper so that I can kind of catch a flow. Nice, nice. Uh, Who is your top five? 
<laughs> let's see um you top five that. artists like oh that's hard I'm like it's all good don't worry if you want to answer, I'm going to look at the questions, but if you want to answer, I could put the mic back to you. You know what? Top five right now, J. Cole, no particular order, J. Cole, Kendrick, Erica, the last two are going to be hard, um, Ari Lennox, mm. like a lot of her uh, old album right now, it's been hitting, mm. and then Summer Walker's new EP, that's top five right now. Top five. Top five. I'm surprised you didn't say Nairobi, Nairobi, Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because she spit hot fire. Okay. What, what is it? I'm not going to ask. Um, how did debate um, influence like your spoken word, if at all? Ooh. Do you want <laughs> 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 yeah. the mic to the camera. Uh, I guess I'll just yeah. throw it in there. Period. How did debate influence your spoken word, if at all? Pass the mic on back. <laughs> Um, so speech and debate, shout out to Bottle, um, Bay Area Urban Debate League. They really took my speech and worked with me and my dialect. Um, a lot of people <laughs> don't realize, but when you grow up in a home with lots of AAVE, Ebonics, you know, uh, code switching, you know, I had to learn a lot of that. And Bottle really took the time to teach me how to do that for different forums. Um, and the type of debate I did was policy debate. And with policy debate, it's lengthy reading. <laughs> like you have probably like 60 pages to read in eight minutes. You know, so a lot of times I would be reading like <laughs> very, very, very fast. Like, hi, my name is Nairobi Willis Barnes. I'm like, I'm 18 years old. Like I would be reading very fast like that in order to get a lot of my words out. And then I, like, at the end, I would have to stop and be like, so what this means, judge, is, <laughs> which is very funny. So I think debate really taught me how to, like, learn when to speed up, slow down, like, when how to finesse words, really. Like, how I need to draw this one out, and I need to make sure to put the comma on this one. You know, that's what it really did for me. And that kind of affects my poetry, because, like, for some parts, you might want to speed up and then slow down, and then, like, you know, put that thing on it, flip it, and reverse it. <laughs> Right. Pop lock and drop this Girl, line, like you know what I'm saying? Like it really helps you as a poet to hone your craft. Thank you for that, and thank you, Cameron Parson, for the question. Next question: What poem did you read that was the gateway into your career as a poet that made you want to become a poet? So um, I remember, like at the night. Um, that I guess I won <laughs> the title or however you want to say it. Um, but the night that um, it got announced that I was the winner, um, there was a poem I read at the end, which I kind of credit to be the, po the poem that made me a poet. So it's called Collard Greens, and it was an ode to my mother, um, and it's kind of like a poem of like memories and like good feelings. It's a poem that like it makes you feel warm inside, you know, like you're eating a hot pot of collard greens, you know, you got cornbread on the side. Like I wanted to encapsulate that feeling, you know, and I think that's what that poem does for me. And it also has like a lot of hints of like familiarity, you know, especially with like black families and kind of like how like it is growing up black. Like, I think that's the poem that made me a poet. Nice. And what was your introduction into poetry, if you haven't shared already? Um, no, I don't think I've ever like said really um, how I really got into poetry. So writing poetry, it never really became poetry for me um, until I was in sixth grade. Um, shout out to my English teacher, Miss Frost at the time. Um, full transparency, I was not really the best <laughs> at like traditional school, sitting down, being quiet, you know, like I was the kid who treated school like home. 
so I would bring everything with me. Like I would have a pencil cup. Like I treated my school desk like my office. And so Miss Frost, she moved me from the desk with other kids, and I had to sit next to her desk in a big red desk, like next to hers. And I had to sit there and work <laughs> every single time I went to English. And I started like writing down things while I was there because the big red desk, like there ain't nothing to do there. See, I, w- I would get to writing and stuff. And then our school had, um, there was this writing challenge for students where you had to write a poem and then um, it would get submitted for a contest within the um, American Library Institute. And so, like, I had wrote something down, and then I was like, I might submit it, but nah, like, forget that. So then I crumbled it up, and I threw it away. Miss Frost gets my poem, and she, why did you throw this away? And I was like, Miss Frost, like, it wasn't that good. Like, I was not trying to hear it. But I ended up submitting it because Miss Frost was just so passionate. Like, she made me get that out the trash. And you know what? You are not doing this. You Like, she was very serious about her students. So she was like, you are not going to put yourself down. You are a writer. <laughs> so I submitted it. And then the poem ended up going straight to the contest. And I ended up being, like, one of the winners amongst my school, um, and it got put, it published in a book. So, like, that kind of solidified me as a writer, really. Nice, epic. It's dope to hear that you've always had that encouraging and pushing, supportive pushing energy around since you started writing. So that's pretty dope to hear. So, all right, second to last question. Do I even need to say that? I, that was rude. All right, question. Um <laughs> So you've been the laureate for since, I think, June. So it's now, what month is it? It's August. It's been two months. But still, you still have responsibility. You've still been the laureate. So what does it feel like to have this platform and responsibility as Oakland Youth Poet Laureate? Honestly, the platform, it's a really good stepping stone, especially for someone who's like, in college and like still trying to figure out who they are it kind of solidifies you in a leadership role and you have like a lot of people who look up to you and like talk to you about advice like I have like a lot of young girls who come talk to me for advice and things like that and a lot of times what I tell them is to like be you like figure out who you are as an artist and the artistry will follow you know, because when you know, like, your writing style, like, what you like to hear, like, I encourage you to go out and listen to different poets so you can really figure out, like, you know, like, "Ah, I didn't really like that, or, oh, yeah, that was dope, you know, so you can figure out your likes, your dislikes, like, how you like to write down, and your own process for writing, because that's really what makes you a writer, when you know who you are, and you know your artistry. My God, she, that was it. Killed it. My next question was going to be, what advice do you have for young writers? Well, you, unless you want to say anything else, you knocked it out the park. Unless you want to add anything, no pressure. I also encourage you, young girls and young poets, young boys, young they thems, <laughs> young everybody. If you're young and you want to get into like spoken word, poetry, different things like that, I really encourage you to like sit with it and stick to it because your poetry is it's not going to be good overnight. You got to really get with it because when I started out, it was roses are red, violets are blue, (laughs) you know, and it was trash poetry. But now look at where I am. Like I be writing good stuff now (laughs) like because I know who I am as an artist. Thank you so much, Nairobi. Thank you for your time. Uh, It's been Nairobi Barnes, 2023 Oakland Youth Poet Laureate. We out here. Thank you. Appreciate you. (laughs)